In this video, we're going to apply the chain rule with a couple of different trig functions. So it might be helpful to remember that the chain rule is used when we have a function that turns out to be the composition of two functions, like f of g of x, and we want to find the derivative of that composition of functions using this particular formula, which is the chain rule. So in practice, when we're looking to apply the chain rule, it's very helpful to recognize when a function turns out to be the composition of two or more functions. So in example one, let's take a look at our given function. f of x equals sine squared of x, which can be rewritten as the sine of x all squared. And this turns out to be the composition of two functions, f of g of x, where f of x is the function x squared, and g of x is the sine of x. And you can check this, if you want, really quickly to consider, let's check this, just, just to feel a little better about it. So we want to check that capital F of X is in fact, let's make these colors match up, is in fact F of G of X. We won't do this for every problem, but in the beginning it's nice to check. So we want to check, does this in fact equal sine squared of x? Well, when we plug in f as our formula, f is the formula that we're using, and the formula is the squaring formula, and inside the squaring formula is g of x. And g of x is the sine of x, and that, in fact, is equal to sine squared of x. So we have verified that our original function, sine squared of x, is the composition of these two functions, little f of g of x, where little f is x squared and little g is sine of x. So now we want to, so this is where we are up to this point. We have f of g of x. So we're going to need to find f prime of g of x and g prime of x. So those are the two parts we need to find. So we need to find, for the chain rule, f prime, let's go with the colors we have up there, purple. We need to find f prime of g of x. And we need to find g prime of x. So this part, the f prime of g of x, means we're going to need to find, first we have to find the derivative of x. So f prime of x is equal to 2 times x. So that means, that means that f prime of g of x f prime of g of x is 2 times g of x. Well, we know what g of x is. g of x is equal to the sine. So here we have f prime of g of x is 2 times the sine of x. That's the first part. That's our f prime of g of x. So now we need to find just g prime, and that's that's the easier part. g prime of x is just the derivative of g, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So that's our second part. So the chain rule tells us to just multiply those two together. So f prime, capital F prime of x, is f prime of g of x. That's f prime of g of x. Times g 
g prime of x, which is just cosine of x. So that's the derivative of our function in the first example. Now in the second example, we have f of x equals sine of x squared, where the angle is now squared, not the trig function. So then we're going to start a similar way. We have f of x, capital F of x equals f of g of x, where little f, where little f of x is the sine of x, and little g of x is x squared. And that can be verified. You can go through that similar exercise we did here to check. And so remember, we're going to want to find f prime. f prime of x is cosine x. So f prime of g of x is equal to cosine of g of x. And so let's so what goes in here is instead of x, right here, we're putting g of x. And g of x is x squared. So this is f prime of g of x, which is this part of the chain rule. And then the last piece is this g prime of x. So the g prime of x is, again, the fairly easy part. This is g, g prime is just 2 of x, you have 2x. So here are the two parts of the chain rule. And so our final answer here is capital F prime is equal to cosine of x squared times 2x. And this 2x can be brought out in front. So we don't mistakenly multiply it with our angle. That's something my students do sometimes. So our final answer here is 2x times the cosine of x squared. You can see there's a bit of a difference here in the two answers. In the first example, we were squaring the trig function. And in the second example, we were squaring the angle. And so the derivatives, uh, you might expect to come out a little bit differently. So I hope this helps you understand a little bit better how you can apply the chain rule with different trig functions. I look forward to talking to you in the next video.